Hello and welcome to Hot Issues. The New Patriotic Party is set to hold its primaries for 169 sitting MPs on the 25th of April. Lots of conversations have started from that point and I'm sure you've also heard the issues emanating from the majority leader and some others who are advocating that some MPs who are doing fantastic within their Kufado-led government must be protected. That has come with a lot of uproar from some members of the party who think that is not altogether democratic. I've been joined in studio by the majority leader and also member of parliament for the Swami constituency and the leader of government business, the Honorable Osei Chime Saponso. Sir, good afternoon. How Thank you, you doing? for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great by God's grace. Great. Are you threatened by those who want to contest you in your constituency? Not at all. Not at all. Um, I would say that since my uh, inauguration to Parliament in 1997, uh, when uh, I entered by a contest, mm -hmm. after in 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, uh, there was no contest in my backyard. So for four consecutive times, I didn't go through any contests. Mm -hmm. However, in the lead up to the 2016 elections, there was a contest mm -hmm. which involved um, four contenders, um, three others plus myself. And uh, we went through the process and I emerged um, triumphant. This time around, um, two of them who contested mm -hmm. have indicated to me that they are no longer interested in the contest, knowing what I've been doing. Um, one understand uh, wants to come back mm -hmm. but it's his own um, choice i'm not i'm not intimidated by that in any way at all um, says he can't find forms to buy mr john daco that he went to the chairman's home and the forms uh you know couldn't be found he came to a cry he couldn't find that are you behind that me yes well i've been even outside of the jurisdiction for a while uh, in fact the whole of last week uh, I was outside. I got here Monday, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the um, activities in Parliament, from the airport after you know uh, putting down my luggage in the house, I had to come to Parliament Monday uh, just to ensure that things went well with Parliament and with government business. Mm -hmm. um, so that was Tuesday mm -hmm. uh, when Parliament resumed. I remember same day. We had to join the president uh, in the distribution of the ambulances. Uh, we came back mm -hmm. and to continue with the business of parliament. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, continued because I had a meeting with all the ministers, given the fact that this meeting is going to be a rather short one, mm -hmm. uh, about eight weeks. I need really to prepare adequately and ensure that priority government business mm -hmm. gets transacted in parliament. So yesterday morning, um, we, we had a marathon session with all the ministers okay. who submitted their priority and went through. Uh, some wanted as many as three, four bills to be um, um, passed by parliament. Mm. I told them that we couldn't afford space for that. Is that why you are asking not to be contested? Uh, I'm not or for, for some to be protected? You're asking for Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe because of the work he's done at the education I, ministry I to be protected. Jose Wusu, first majority. Uh, the I'm Speaker not the person Parliament. making the call. Who is making that call? It's the party. The party? Yes. Are you support of that call? Well, I think, you know my, my position. Mm. People say that uh, we are a democratic party. At the end of every four years, we should swing our doors open and allow for anybody who wants to contest to come in and contest. That's democracy. <laughs> um, you're not suggesting to me that what obtains in the United States of America, in the UK, in Canada, in Australia, from whom we are learning, mm -hmm. is undemocratic. You're not telling me that. I'm asking you. And so when you say that that is uh, democratic or that would be undemocratic, mm -hmm. if maybe an attempt is made to shield others, I'm telling you that democracy doesn't necessarily mean mm -hmm. that the process of selecting candidates should be necessarily by election. In the US, in the UK, in Germany, in Australia, in Italy, wherever mm. democracy is entrenched, what usually happens is that for certain members of parliament, they are assessed 
by the parliamentary party. And then the recommendations go to the, um, the party. Mm -hmm. And the party then will say that, well, these are good materials for us, uh, so they should continue. Mm -hmm. Why is it that when a party is ruling, the leader of the, part of the party, in our case, the de facto leader, mm -hmm. who is the president, right? When he's um, um, continuing, there's no contest. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the moment you allow for, the party allows for a contest, it will mean that the party itself is disputing mm -hmm. the competence or the performance of the president. Is that as simple as it is? No, I'm saying that it's a cardinal issue. Okay. And that is the reason why usually mm -hmm. certain presidents are not contested. So the same principle, if we should extend to the members of parliament mm -hmm. who will be conducting the business of parliament and of government, mm -hmm. to the extent that there may be no issues against them, mm -hmm. the party then uh, would hold them up to continue. But However, that's, but that's, there not, may the, that's instances, not a contract you signed with your there may be There may Swami. be instances mm. in our particular case mm. um, where perhaps somebody may be doing very well in parliament. Right. May be doing exceedingly well in parliament. But then, in the constituency, he might have gotten himself involved in some infractions, bringing the party into the dispute. Mm. Perhaps he might have involved himself in some chieftaincy dispute mm. and bringing the image of the party down. Right. Mm. Or perhaps in the constituency, it simply ignores the party. Is, right. Is that your case? <laughs> Certainly not. Are you, so, are you, are you, do you have a relationship with your constituents? With my constituents? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I think that, well, Achebe, it was who said, um, the lizard that fell from the giant Iroko tree, mm. uh, says that if it's not appreciated, um, he would appreciate his own effort by it. Mm. That is why he says, mm. lizards, when they come from, uh, heights and land on the ground, mm. begin nodding their heads. So <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not praising myself, but mm. I know that I've been doing uh, my best. It's Except I must mm. admit mm. that lately, because of the workload here, previously when I was not the minority leader or the majority leader, there was greater space for me to be having much more greater interaction with my party. Mm. But even now, I find space to have meetings with the constituency executives with the electoral area coordinators, mm. and uh, also makes time to go around the constituency to engage the uh, constituency parties at the level of the electoral areas. Mm. Um, so I've been doing all these things. Are you Attending, scared of contest? How can I be? I'm not. I'm not. Uh, if the party decides that, oh, well, in spite of what we have done, we should, our backs should be opened. I have no, I have no illusion. If your people pick the scorecard, and decide to take bit by bit, what would be your score? In respect of what? Which would warrant, what would be the which would warrant another four more for, yeah. for say, Chairman Sample. So. Well, I believe I've, I've, I've done my best as far as, um, you know, pushing government business through mm -hmm. in Parliament is concerned. I've been much more, very, very uh, consultative amongst my own peers, having caucus meetings, trying to raise the standards and the performance of members of parliament mm -hmm. within the caucus, the MPP caucus, and generally within parliament for the parliamentary group. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about members of parliament. Occasionally we have joint caucuses and we run them through, you know, elevating their performance. Mm -hmm. And outside parliament, we have had workshops where I've spoken, I've led in, you know, trying to build the competence of members of parliament. That's for parliament. Mm -hmm. When it comes to making laws, people know the role that I played. Arguably, the, uh, the uh, greatest function of parliamentarians, mm -hmm. oversighting the executive, people know what role that I play. In the constituency, because you cannot forget the constituency, mm -hmm. um, I keep in close contact with them. But as I said, I cannot mark myself. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've been doing my best, but it's for the constituents to judge what I've been doing. Um, in terms of um, development, mm -hmm. which I keep insisting, mm -hmm. is not a prime responsibility of members of parliament because you can only lobby for projects. If government of the day says to you that, yes, I appreciate what you have said, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. this is not my priority now. Mm -hmm. A member of parliament, what can you do? But they make promises on a campaign platform. 
I don't make promises. You've never made any? I don't. Talk Not to my constituents. All. Talk to my constituents. Because I know the role of the member of parliament. But you go to a place, for instance, um, the roads in my constituency mm. are not the best. They are not in the best of shapes at all. So you go there, people are living there, and you drive through the place, you see how it is. Mm. So people raise issues. Uh, mm. I don't tell them I'm going to construct a road for you. Because I know that competence I don't have. I don't have the capacity to do the road. So I will tell you that, yes, I've seen it. I, I came by the road. I saw how deplorable the road is. I'll do my utmost best um, to you know, throw your, your, your request to government. What do you say to those who think you're one of the few Mugabes in parliament and you have served enough, so you need to take a backbench for fresh blood to come in? Well, um, the speaker said some time ago that um, the, the, that description is not a good one. It's not a befitting one. Why is it not? Because um, if you want good examples of democra uh, democratic leaders, perhaps mm. Mugabe, with respect to him, may not be one of the persons to be cited. Can we use Methuselah instead? Uh, well, you may, I may prefer a McCain okay. or a Kennedy. Mm. They pursued the path of democracy, and that is what we should learn. Mm. We should not, you know, uh, tag people with, uh, you know, adjectives and characterizations that are pregnant with uh, innuendos. I'm not, I'm not too sure that is good enough. You're, but I think mm. that if, if, the, if the, the issue is that this man is being long here in Parliament, he has no relevance in Parliament, uh, and he's an aspired commodity, mm. right? That's a different issue. So talk, let's talk to issues. It's not your long stay. I am one of the people who, who uh, advocate that parliament is like wine. Mm -hmm. The longer you stay, the, the better you become. An indication ordinarily, that you, you intend to stay here forever. Ordinarily. Ordinar no. I mean, I'm, we are human. You get to a point, your, your physical constitution perhaps would not allow you to, to, to go mm -hmm. further. Mm -hmm. And I've said it to my constituents that God willing, the 2021-2024 will be my last in Parliament. The issue that my party has been raising, mm. and including the President, have all been raising is that I should endeavor to bring somebody up to step boldly into my shoes when I leave. Are you doing that? <laughs> it's a difficult question. Why is it? It is a difficult question because, you see, it comes to the issue of the mode of selecting our members of parliament. The focus now has shifted. When I was first coming to parliament, the emphasis was not so much on uh, the beauty of the drink that you are presenting mm -hmm. or how many cola nuts you are presenting. I mean, we are all traditionalists. If, I, if you are my constituents, and I know you are a cane maker, mm -hmm. and I come to you, Certainly, I will not come uh, empty-handed. Mm. I will come with a drink. And I will come, perhaps, with a calabash of kula nuts. Right? right? Those days, it was the appreciation or the recognition of the fact that you yourself acknowledges that he is well-positioned uh, to determine your fate. So that recognition was sufficient. You're talking about monetization of, uh, Absolutely. of, of politics. So, you see, increasingly, these days, because the focus is shifting, when people come, already they are saddled. Is it not because the constitutional provision that allows people to get into parliament doesn't, for example, demand of them of any academic qualification or work experience? You need to be a registered voter of a certain age, have resided in a certain constituency over time, and you're qualified to go to parliament. I think it's, some, it's one of the issues you appropriately um, have raised. Mm. Uh, you remember that in the uh, consultative assembly that wrote the 1992 constitution, mm. this issue about the qualification and eligibility criteria mm. of potential members of parliament was discussed extensively. Before this constitution, which really 
I think, copies more or less what obtained in the previous constitutions. Mm -hmm. I would suggest to you strongly that even the, the um, immediate post-independence constitution had a qualification criterion which related to proficiency in English. Right. For whatever reason, and that was, it was retained in the Republican Constitution in the 19... Uh, 1969 uh, mm -hmm. constitution in the 1979 constitution mm -hmm. they were repeated right but what, for whatever populist reasons mm -hmm. in the 1992 constitution that qualification was removed can, can we change it do we want I to change think, it? you see even in 1979 mm -hmm. the consultative the constituent assembly as mm -hmm. it was called at the time when it came to debating that qualification criteria people at the time were even talking about not leaving it at proficiency in English. Mm. They then wanted to tie it to specific ac uh, academic qualification. People at the time, mm. and I remember this clearly, were talking about using the advanced level right. qualification at the time, mm. or uh, at least post-ordinary level qualification. Right. The discussion went on for about three days until they then decided that, well, they were not making much progress. And then they allowed it to remain the way it was and maintain only the proficiency in English qualification. Okay. Well, As I said, in 1992, mm. we decided to remove that. So, admittedly, um, we are not so much interested in the qualification criteria, but I think that it should be part of it. Reason is, mm. arguably, the greatest function of parliament and indeed of parliamentarians is law-making. Mm. And you must have some degree of understanding to appreciate a bill and make meaningful contribution to it. Remember, you are witness to the fact that when it comes to bill making, how many people are in the chamber? Is that why we can't Often lose times, the likes of your, yourself? I'm not beating my chest. I believe that um, others will speak for me. But I think that uh, I should not be blowing my horn. I think that as far as uh, expanding the frontiers, mm of democratic governance uh, from the perspective of parliament is concerned, um, I have been contributing positively and my, my colleagues will be in a better position to attest to what I do. This is Hot Issues. My name is Johnny Hughes. My guest is the member of parliament for Swami constituency in the Ashanti region. He's also the leader of government business and the majority leader. We'll take a break. When we return, there are more issues coming up, issues about corruption, issues about how the party intends to fare in the coming elections and other matters arise. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My name is Johnny Hughes. I'm guest presenting for your regular Stephen Antiwe in studio with the Honourable Member of Parliament for the Swami constituency. He's also the Majority Leader of Ghana's Parliament, the Seventh Parliament, and the Leader of Government Business, the Honourable Osei Chime Sambonso. Honourable, before the break, we had spoken about Parliament and all of that. I want you to tell me, what will be your chances in the forthcoming primaries? Do you know? Will be a one-touch victory? I mean, for my for constituency, you, yes. I have no doubt in my mind. I have no doubt in my mind. And uh, I know what I've been briefed about what the constituency, um, executive, the police station, uh, agency. I'm told that um, the electoral areas, the various mm -hmm. electoral areas, are even undertaking an exercise that uh, they are saying that they should append their signatures to declare the person on the post. The conversation is obviously about the new voter register and the fact that there's been calls for consultations to be held. What are your own views about this? Uh, is the inter-party uh, group dragging matters beyond its limit? Well, let's face it. Um, the Electoral Commission is an independent body. They have the final say in whatever. Mm. But um, for purposes of transparency and accountability, they have this engagement with the IPAC. But let's not kid ourselves. Mm. The IPAC is only an advisory. Mm. The final decision is uh, left to the Electoral Commission. Like <laughs> cabinet. The cabinet in, in the government mm. is only advisory to the president. Mm. The president bears the can. If anything goes wrong, it's the president who's held accountable. A leader who doesn't take advice is who crush. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm saying, that if anything goes wrong, is it easy that to be held accountable? Is the advice credible? Is the, it tenable? The advice of the uh, the inter-party group. 
don't know awesome. what they are discussing. Mm. I'm not part of it. Right. As a nation, what we have to decide first mm. is whether or not we agree with the current uh, register, whether the numbers registered reflect the true populations of this. The country. Electoral Commission says it is credible. I'm saying, uh, when did the Electoral Commission say that? It said that before the referendum. It said that uh, before the district assembly elections as well. That? That the register is credible. When was it? What was the occasion? This was before the December When was 17. it? Uh, what was the occasion? Because they came before us. Mm. The Special Budget Committee. We related to this. Now, go. I will take us back. Afrojan, in those days, was always appealing to us, citizens, whenever there was a, an exhibition of the voters' register, that we should assist them, <coughs> that the, the letter commission, they are not magicians, that the citizens should assist them in purging the list of the, maybe people who were dead, and so on and so forth. They, they are not the person to do that. Mm -hmm. But I'm relating to the percentage of citizens who find their names. Now, today, we are in the region of 29, 30 million, we are told. The voters' register, as we speak now, is around 17 million. And if there should be limited registration this year, don't forget that the limited registration that went on went on in the, uh, the regions mm -hmm. where they were going to be, uh, they were going to do some split-ups. Mm -hmm. So for the national exercise, <coughs> even those regions, people have turned 18 again, so those regions, and the anticipation is that if you finish this year, mm. they are looking at perhaps approaching about 18 million on the voters register. That will exceed 60% mm. of the population. Tell me in Africa where, where that exists. The average in Africa is between 51-52% of citizens' population on the register. In Ghana, if we approach, as of now, we are in the region of mm. about 50, almost 59, 58.5 or so percent. Now, that will mean that, as I said, our calf is becoming bigger than our thigh. The accounts will say, we'll say hey, 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 one If indeed we have that, don't forget that within the 30 million, you have about, you know, recently the Nigerian High Commissioner was saying that the population of Nigerians in the country is approaching 5 million or so. Mm. I dispute that anyway. But total foreign, maybe uh, nationals in the country, will be in the region of about 2 million. Mm all told. So that would mean that if you have about 30 million, about 2 million would, be, would not be eligible to register because they are not citizens. Right? So if, if you have 28 million and you have 18 million, that would take the percentage higher. So what it means is that if we agree mm -hmm. and that to make the register much more uh, credible, even if that was the sole reason, mm -hmm. I'll support it. But it goes beyond mm -hmm. that. We want to protect the integrity of the process when we started, we had just barren ID cards, which had no uh, images on them. Mm. Then later, we introduced black and white pictures. Mm. Subsequently, we introduced colored pictures. Mm. When we introduced black and white pictures, we did another registration. When we moved to colored pictures, we did another registration. Right. You remember? Right. And then we introduced biometrics. We did another registration. Today, we are saying that, look, to protect it, Further protect it and ensure the integrity of the system. Mm. Let's not only do the fingerprinting, let's do facial impression, including in particular your eyeballs. You have traveled outside the country. Mm. If you traveled outside and went to UK, for instance, 15 years ago, they were doing only fingerprints. Today, when you get there, it's not only fingerprints, they capture your facial impression. It's not the case. So if the EC is saying that going forward to further protect it, Let's add this so mm. that nobody can have any reason or any cause to have to register twice or thrice. Engage simply engage in multiple registration, and thereafter engage in multiple voting. Mm. What assurance do you need? This explanation is that of your party, and some say you seem to be in bed with the electoral commission because they are singing the same song. Are you in bed with the EC? Is the explanation that was offered to us at the special budget committee? Mm. which I chair, by the Electoral Commission. It is not the MPP's position. Are you worried about the timing of the Electoral Commission to compile a new register? Some say it's too close for comfort and so should be abandoned. Well, that is another issue. You see, so the principle is that mm. 
it's important to do it. The timing is another matter. Hmm. As for the timing, I would say that it depends on the preparedness hmm. of the EC themselves. If, for instance, they're able to procure um, biometrics, my own thinking is that if they're able to, the devices are very expensive. Hmm. Other than that, my wish is for them to procure uh, about 32,000 hmm. so that every polling station would have one. If they, if they did that, I'll tell you within, within four days, you'll finish with the exercise. Right? You'll finish with the exercise. Mm. But because of the fact that the equipment is expensive, usually they will zone the country into compartments. I understand the, this time around they want to do procure about 8,000, mm. as they told us uh, when we met them. 8,000 then would mean that with uh, police stations numbering about 32,000, you have to do the process in, in four zones. Let's do it four times. Do we have the money? Do we have the money to procure? Exactly, because the vice president says we won't be lured to spend beyond our budget. In that is what I'm saying. That do we have the money? For what? To buy these things we're talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that in 2016, when we're not doing it, mm -hmm. the budget was 1.7 okay. billion. Now that they want to do it, the budget is less than 1.7 billion. So don't, don't even factor in depreciation, inflation, mm -hmm. interest rates, and uh, the, cur uh, the currency, um, uh, the foreign, foreign, foreign exchange, you know, uh, depreciation mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the city. Mm -hmm. 2016, they were not doing these things. The request was 1.7 billion. Are you, are you suggesting that somebody overspent? Oh, I'm just painting the picture to you. I'm, I'm asking you. A if your question. conclusion is that somebody overspent, please say no, so. No, I'm asking you. I'm painting the picture. Did somebody what overspent? Happened. I'm painting the picture of what happened. Honorable, th there have been times when you have said that you would take what the minority says with a pinch of salt because there are places li lies and propaganda. For example, the matter of uh, Honorable Adongo uh, regarding issues on finance and all of that. Why would you say that? <laughs> the truth of the eating of the say is in the pudding, right? Now, governments are elected to um, administer the, the, the state mm. and ensure development in economic, social, cultural lives of the people, bring development. Mm. Now, development is measured by traditional benchmarks. Mm. They talk about GDP growth, they talk about um, inflation, mm. they talk about uh, interest rates, mm. they talk about currency depreciation, they talk about uh, gross uh, international reserves, mm. gross international reserves, in the region of about $8 billion. Dead stock. Unprecedented in the history of this country. Dead stock. The dead stock. How much is it? Tell me. You should tell me. Your the figures that have been thrown about have been disputed over 200 million. It's been disputed. So you tell me. Precisely. So um, he would, you would, you would look at percentage increase in the dead stock, mm. right? Mm. When the NDC inherited, how much was it? It was about 9.6 billion, mm. right? By the time they were leaving, it was a region of about 122 million, right? What was the percentage increase? Over 1,000%. They were kicked out they, for oh, that. No, no, can I, can I, can I land? Over 1,000%. Today, if it's in the region of 220, what does it mean? It means that the debt stock has increased by, let's say, in the region of um, about 80%. Is there justification? It's about 80%. Is there justification? So if that? you increase the debt stock by over 1,000%, mm. and then the increase under one mm. is about 80%, you have justification to criticize that person. They have no moral right? No, I'm saying that you don't have that moral right. Mm. I'm borrowing your words. I'm borrowing your words. Words that are available <laughs> for everyone to use. Available for everyone to use. There's one, there's one thing that maybe I would, I would admit mm. that we must up our game. And that is in the area of uh, railways development in particular. In mm. fact, infrastructure development. Uh, we, are, we are doing well in this one district. Um, uh, one, one village, one dam project. Mm. We started on a good course. Mm. Um, the one district, one factory, we, we, we started. We are on track. But beyond that, other infrastructure, especially roads, as I mm. said, we need to up our game. The contractors are crying for their money. Yes, we need to up our games on that. And personally, I've been in close collaboration with the Minister of Roads, mm. with the Finance Minister, and sometimes even with the President, that we need to up our performance in that area. I admit. Mm. But apart from that, 
in all other areas, if we match our performance, mm. certainly we've done much, much better. The CD before the dollar, pound, euro is not doing so well. Well, um, it, again, you talk about currency depreciation. When the NDC took over from MPP, mm. for first time, it was one to one, 1 1.1 1 .1 to $1. Mm. When they were leaving, how much was it? When they were leaving, in fact, when Kufour took over, the eight years of Kufour, the city mm. depreciated by about 58% cumulatively. Mm. Cumulatively, when they were leaving, the city had depreciated close to um, 360%. Today, as we speak, mm. what is it? It has depreciated. But what is the depreciation, the rate of the depreciation? So, if under the your Vice President regime, said he had arrested the dollar if you are and given the key to IGPR. In relative terms. Did, 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 in the, relative did terms, the dollar will, break jail? In relative terms, we have performed much better. Did the dollar break jail? The, the dollar has appreciated against the city. We all admit. But I'm saying that in relative terms, it depreciated by 360, I think 362% or so mm -hmm. under the NDC. So if today it has depreciated by, let's say, cumulatively about um, 28 or so percent, you have the gas to compare your own against this. Honorable, I thank you very much for your time. Once again, thank you for having me. It's and been a joy and a pleasure. Absolutely. And that's the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Swami constituency. He's in a race one more time uh, for the primary set for the 25th of April, 2020. My name is Johnny Hughes. Thank you for watching.